Hey, how's it going? My name is Brendan Bigley. Um, I'm just going to cut right to the chase here. You want to know what it's like to stream from the M1 lineup of Macs, whether that be the Mini, the Air, or the Pro, all released at the end of 2020. Um, I picked up the M1 Mac Mini. Um, it was the cheapest. I was planning on just building like a desktop setup, so I didn't really care about portability or anything like that. Um, so that's nice. I got the 16 gigabytes of RAM variant. Um, I watched just like tons and tons of videos before I made the purchase. And a lot of them were saying, hey, if you're going to get this thing and you're planning on editing video or really doing anything beyond just like normal everyday stuff, probably worth the upgrade to the 16 gigabytes of RAM. So that's what I did. Um, storage doesn't really matter. You can expand it. It's fine. Anyway, let's jump to the thing that actually matters here. Um, I made a video about a week ago uh, using... This guy, I have a drawer of just capture cards now because I'm testing everything. But anyway, I, I uh, was using this guy, the Elgato HD60S, um, which is a good capture card. Don't get me wrong. If you're using this on Windows, I mean, it's it rips. It's awesome. I would recommend it. Um, that said, I have upgraded to the HD60S+. Plus. Um, actually, let me hop over to desktop real quick uh, just so you can see the difference here. We'll get to this later. Um, HD 60S, it's 140 bucks um, at the moment. List price is 180. The S plus is just a straight 200. Um, so generally, you know, if you're going by manufacturer price, there's a $20 difference between the two. Um, if you are planning on streaming from the M1 lineup of Macs at the moment, at the time of, you know, my recording this December 28th, um, definitely get the S plus. Like no question at all the s plus is the one you're supposed to get do not get the hd 60 s i wouldn't even recommend it as like a oh but there's like a fun workaround like yes there is but it's so rough that i wouldn't recommend it um so if you want to check out my weird workaround with the hd 60 s like if you already have one and you get the m1 mac and you're like oh i want to try streaming you can check that video out you know i'm sure it's popping up somewhere on youtube um, so you can check that out. If not, I'll put it in the description below. Um, but that said, uh, I just would not recommend this capture card, but I have found a way to get it to stream. Um, the long story short is that, uh, the reason that it's cheaper in the first place is because you have to use this piece of software, which I haven't uninstalled yet, but it's called OBS link. Um, and it essentially tricks the Mac into thinking that the, uh, that the capture card is a video device. Whereas the HD 60 S plus, um, doesn't need OBS link and just actually is a video capture device. Um, which let me open up OBS here. Hello. You get like a fun, like recursive thing going on here. Anyway, if I were to pull up on OBS devices, you can just see it shows up here in this list. Whereas the HD 60 S not the plus would not show up here. You'd need to do a bunch of fancy stuff. Uh, and it's not worth it at the moment. If, if I'm being completely honest, it's just not. Um, so all of that said, uh, what do I have going on here? Actually, let me bring OBS back because that'll probably be the easiest for you to see. Um, so let me just show you a little bit of gameplay. I mean, it runs really well. Maybe Animal Crossing isn't you know the best game to show off uh, how powerful it is. Um, but that said, it runs great. Every game I've tested runs great. Um, and the Mac Mini is like way more than capable of handling everything I've thrown at it. Um, if you go watch that last video, I talk a lot about how, like, you know, I can't feel any heat coming off this thing. The fan's not turning on at all. Um, it's incredible. I mean, it's not using the CPU really at all. Uh, like the most I've seen it use the CPU is like 15%, which, uh, compared to my old windows computer, which maybe you can see it's on this chair over here. Um, my old Windows laptop would scream like it was dying every time. It would just like, it, it would sound like it was like grinding gears, but there's like no internal mechanics that would actually make that sound realistically. So it was like inventing new gears to grind because it was so upset. Um, so anyway, that's it. I don't know why everyone on my island is sick. What's, what's going on, man? Anyway, that's not the point. Um, Let's get back to how I got this to work. So, uh, uh, if we go back to desktop, you can see here, um, if I wanted to add video, actually, let me just remove this guy so we don't have to deal with it. If we were to add a video capture device and say existing, the Elgato, great. Uh, I'll make it smaller just so we can prove that it's here. Hello, running around. Um, 
and show you the properties. It is very simple. It is literally, you know, I'm picking the device from the drop down. It works. It's the HD 60s. It's great. Um, I'm using 1920 by 1080. Uh, the simple frames per second values of 60. Um, just like essentially the default settings, uh, and it's coming in great, especially compared to the HD 60s and not the plus. Um, so that's cool by itself. I'm doing a couple other things that I would recommend um, really quick. I'll, I'll just go over them like very quickly. So like number one, you can see down here, I have Spotify listed as an audio source. Um, if you've ever tried streaming from Mac, you know that it is hard or uh, impossible out of the box to grab desktop audio the same way you can on PC. Um, on PC, desktop audio would just show up as like an option and then you could just you know, turn it up, and then if you're playing audio anywhere on the computer, uh, it'll just come through an OBS. And that rules, but it's not possible on Mac. So you have to do some, like, weird stuff. Um, I have already taken the liberty of opening up a Google Chrome browser uh, to show off a couple show off a couple ways of doing this. Um, number one, this is an expensive one. It is $100, which is worth mentioning right up front. It's called Loopback. Uh, by Rogue Amoeba. Rogue Amoeba, one of my favorite Mac developers, like, period. Um, I make a lot of podcasts, and uh, all of their software is great for that. Audio Hijack I use, Sound Source I use, um, and now Loopback I use as well. Um, I've also used Fission. Fission's great. Anyway, Rogue Amoeba is good at their jobs, um, and they have updated all of their software to work with the M1 Max already. Um, it says it's not been certified for full compatibility, uh, but they have beta versions of everything, and they are all working flawlessly for me at the moment, which is awesome. They did that, like, very quickly. Uh, so that's great. Uh, Loopback. Essentially what Loopback is doing as, as a piece of software um, is it's creating virtual audio devices. So if I bring up OBS again, I could just show you, for example, the default mic that I have here. Uh, if I bring up the properties, the device is the Yeti stereo microphone. That is that is what I'm using to record currently. That is an actual physical hardware device. Um, you know, the Game Capture HD 60s because it's a video device also counts as a device. Uh, the the webcam that I'm using uh, right now also counts as a device. So you know, that's all uh, possible ways of inputting audio. Um, that said, something like Spotify or the desktop would not come in as an audio device because for some reason, Mac just doesn't allow that. So what Loopback does is it allows you to create your own audio devices. Um, so let me get this out of the way a little bit. I'll show you my Loopback setup. Um, so for Spotify, for example, I literally just have it set. So like Spotify is a source, the app, you can just pick an app from the list of all the apps you have uh, and say that that's a source. So I'm not going to do it right now um, for like YouTube copyright strike reasons. Um, but if I were to play Spotify music, um, it, I could export it out to the stream. So just by doing this, just by making this as a device, it already uh, exists as a device here. So if I click on this, you can actually see properties, loopback, Spotify. That's a that's an audio device technically. The Mac can recognize um, and OBS can say, oh yeah, we can pull this audio device in. So that rules. Um, I have another one that allows uh, the Game Capture HD, or sorry, the HD 60S Plus uh, to take audio in, become an audio device, and then also export out through my headphones, which is this over here. Um, I have my headphones plugged into my Yeti, which I know not a lot of people do, but I, I end up doing it, so whatever. Um, this could be anything. This could be any of your uh, devices, as you can see. So, all that said, Loopback is really great. It's really easy. Again, it is $100, um, so I, I, am, I am fully aware that that is like probably too expensive for some people. Uh, for me, somebody who I think is getting a little bit more serious about streaming, um, I, it was kind of like a no-brainer choice for me, especially compared to um, the other options that exist out there, which I have tried one of, and I'll just go over them really quick. There are two other options here. Number one, uh, this is a great article, uh, billycarando.com. Good job, Billy. Um, made this list, uh, or, or made this article that pretty much just talks about like how to do this, but free. Um, so it uses this thing called I Show You Audio, um, which essentially like is doing all the same stuff loopback is doing, but you're actually going into your audio devices, like in your settings, as you can see here, um, and actually like adding a, a real physical audio device here. Um, and then this multi output device, I, it's, it's intense. Um, it's doable. Don't get me wrong. You could follow this and like 
nail it. You'd be fine. You you would actually have everything that you wanted. Um, it's great. It's it does what it wants. But I found over time um, that I show you audio capture ended up being a little bit like too much of a headache to deal with uh, turning things on and off and like oh man where's my audio going I'm not really sure. Um, eventually I ran into problems with it so I bailed from I show you audio capture to eventually just invest the money in having loopback um, because I just thought it would be better. There's another one that I know of that I haven't used called Black Hole, which seems to be a similar thing. Um, if you look at the screenshots on this article, I'll, both of these articles will be linked in the description, by the way, worth mentioning. It has the exact same situation where like you're creating an audio device that shows up in your actual audio devices section. Um, with loopback, you don't have to do any of that. It like literally just um, all happens within the loopback app. So you never have to open up your own settings or like configure new devices or whatever. Like if I just hit new virtual device, it just creates one in my audio devices in settings without me needing to open it. Um, it's great. It's very clean. It's very good. Um, so that's kind of the audio problem. Um, and that's going to happen regardless of what Mac you're using is like, how do I capture desktop audio? Um, those are three easy solutions. Loopback being the easiest, but expensive. I show you being the cheapest, um, you know, but a little bit of a headache potentially. All of that said, um, you know, this works really well. So I, I guess it's worth mentioning also, like, as far as latency is concerned, I am actually playing Animal Crossing right now on OBS. Like, I'm using the OBS preview window to play Animal Crossing. Would not recommend, generally. I mean, there's a little bit of latency. I can definitely feel it already. Um, but that said... Uh, you know, if you have another monitor or whatever, you could just, you know, move OBS over to one monitor and then have the game go into another monitor, you know, using the uh, Elgato capture card pass through or whatever, um, which is what I actually do generally. Um, that said, if you wanted to open up um, Game Capture HD, I think there is a way to do that. I, I have done it in the past. Uh, so you can actually play the game on Game Capture HD. And that actually weirdly has like almost no latency at all. Uh, it's pretty remarkable if i'm being honest um so all that said like that'll get you going like that'll get you streaming from an m1 mac you know um outside of all the stuff that i just talked about everything that you would do to stream is exactly what you would do on a windows pc or you know another mac prior to the m1 setup um so that's cool by itself um i think over the past couple of years you know the question of like will people be able to stream well from the Mac um, has kind of like percolated up. Um, and I think the answer at this point with, you know, the M1 Mac lineup plus the HD60 S plus, um, those two in conjunction with one another just make this to me, I think one of the best devices you can buy if you're like an entry level console streamer. Um, it is so wildly powerful uh, and so kind of easy to use once you get the HD 60 S plus hooked up, um, that like you could get going very, very quickly. There's a balloon here. I'm not going to get the balloon, but you know, we can just like, watch it go by. It's very nice. Um, yeah, I've, I've had this like dream set up for a really long time. Um, that, you know, it, I just wanted a desktop computer that would allow me to make anything I wanted to make without really much hassle. And, um, after getting the HD 60 S plus, I'm like at that point, um, I can kind of make and do anything that I want, uh, very easily, whether it be a video like this, I could very easily in OBS hit start streaming and then be streaming as well. Um, so yeah, the possibilities are endless. Uh, would I recommend the M1 Mac mini for streaming or just the M1 Macs in general? I absolutely would. Um, as I said, they're wildly powerful. Um, the mini, particularly is pretty cheap um it'll get you in the mac ecosystem which rules and i would recommend um and also will get you streaming with like minimal headache i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to cover i don't think there is i think it really is just that easy um as i mentioned in the last video if you have any questions or you know want to know anything at all i guess really just post a comment down below and i'll get to it i mean I'm not doing a whole lot, so uh, yeah, shoot me a message and I'll, I'll try and answer any questions you may have. Um, outside of that, I'm like just kind of experimenting and trying new stuff and just seeing what the Mac Mini is capable of. Um, I don't know how often I'm going to post videos on this channel. This is my personal channel. This is like the fifth video I've ever posted to this channel uh, over the many years of me having it. 
Um, but that said, I will probably be testing more stuff with the Mac Mini. Um, so maybe I'll post some more videos of that. I guess let me know if there's anything you want me to test. Um, I've tested a lot of stuff. Pretty much everything that I use on a daily basis works and works well on the Mac Mini. And in a lot of instances, works better than it did on my old MacBook, which... I don't even know where it is. I think I moved it out to the living room or something. Um, but all of that said, I mean, it's great. I would recommend one. Um, there's like a billion videos online about how great the M1 Macs are. Um, I concur. I agree with all of them. It's good. Uh, I'm not going to make a, a billion videos about it. <laughs> I'm just going to make the two, I guess. Um, but yeah. If you have any more questions, let me know. My name is Brendan Bigley. You can find me on Twitter, at Brendan Bigley. Um, all the links are below. You can listen to my podcast. I don't know. You're here to learn how to stream from your Mac. That's fine. Um, I don't need you to follow me everywhere else if you don't want to. But if you want to, you can. That'd be nice. All right. I'm going to go. Maybe play Animal Crossing. See ya.